What I'd like to talk about today is one of my favorite products, the Interacoustics Titan. It's one of my favorite products because of its performance. Uh, this particular product can be uh, a middle ear analyzer, a full clinical middle ear analyzer, with or without 1000 Hz. It can also be a clinical photoacoustic emissions system as well. It can be DPOAE or TEOAE or both. And it can be an infant uh, screening ABR unit or AABR, automated ABR. And so what I'd like to talk to you today about is the function of the middle ear analyzer and the function of the autoacoustic emissions and to demonstrate the performance of both of those. This particular unit can be used as a handheld and then everything can be downloaded to the database where it can be viewed on the computer, uh, saved as a PDF, emailed to somebody, merged with electronic medical records, or printed out. It can also be used as a PC-based unit. And so I'm going to show you the operation of it as a PC-based system uh, because that will give you the most comprehensive view of it. Uh, keep in mind that everything that we did as a PC-based system that you'll see on the screen, we could do uh, as simply a handheld. When you use it as a PC-based system, here's what you do. There is a cradle, which I know you can't see, but I'm placing the unit in the cradle now. And this is the probe assembly. And I'm going to just uh, tape that on to my shirt. And this is the probe. And stick my probe in the ear. All right, just so that's in there. Now, watch this screen. What this is, is called Auto Access. Auto Access is a platform, a database platform. You're familiar with other database platforms. You're certainly familiar with NOAA, and NOAA is a database platform for many types of instruments, but in particular, hearing aids and their programs that are used to, to, to uh, adjust those. So, uh, this is Interacoustics database platform. It's called Auto Access, and if you had more than one instrument, they would all be listed, they would each be listed here. See, I have the Titan Suite, and this particular customer who we're delivering this to is also has auditory evoke potential. So they would enter in the custom, the patient, as I have, uh, these fields that have the uh, red mark on them are the ones that are mandatory, and that would be the first and last name, the uh, patient ID number, and the date of birth. Once that's entered, then you can go right into Titan Suite as I am now, just by double clicking on that, and you'll get this. Okay? This is where we could upload clients to the handheld. In other words, you already know. If you already knew the patients that you're going to be uh, testing this afternoon, you could upload them to the, uh, to the handheld. This way, when you download those tests it, uh, back into the system, then you can simply uh, choose their name and you won't have to add that uh, as you download it. Or, uh, as you see, there's a place where you can download a session that you've done on the handheld. And when you download it, if there's no name, it'll give you the opportunity to put in the patient demographics. There's another way that this could be used. It can be used as a handheld with no computer because it will communicate instantly and perfectly, flawlessly, to a, a color um, wireless a Bluetooth printer. And therefore you could simply do the test, whether it's middle ear analyzing or OAE or a screening ABR on an infant and do both ears and then just hit print and out comes a one page printout just perfectly and instantaneously. So there's a lot of flexibility in this. I'm just showing you this mode which effectively demonstrates even how it would you work on the small color screen that's on the handheld. It's the same screen that many cell phones use. Okay, so I am I'm going from the main tab to the impedance tab. 
to show you how we would do uh, a tympanogram. And I'm going to choose, over here I can choose what my test protocol is. And I could just do a normal temp, an extended temp, temp if I have negative pressure uh, that is uh, past 300, then it'll go to negative pressure of 600. Or I can do an infant temp, which of course will be a thousand hertz probe tone. Or I can do a, a, a temp and then reflex as well. And this is set up right now, this test, to do four frequencies, 500, 1000, 2000, and 4000. And you can program it to do any sequence you want. And it will find the threshold. So I'm going to choose this test that does temp and reflex thresholds, just ipsy. Of course, I could do contra. I could also include reflex latency if I wanted to. All right, so watch this. Here we go. Okay, so notice this. I got the tympanogram very, very quickly, and then it immediately went, because I had selected the sequence, it immediately went to acoustic reflex, and this is ipsilateral, and it did, it found my threshold at 500 hertz, 1000 hertz, and 2000 hertz. See, at 500, it started at 80, and it got a deflection of 0.04, which was within the norm. It repeated that to make sure it was repeatable, and then took it. And same thing at 1,000, 0.03 as a deflection at 2,000, still, still within the normal range, so it indicated 80 dB as the reflex threshold at 2,000. At 4,000, it only got a 0.01 deflection, and so uh, it moved to 85, where it got a 0.05 uh, cc deflection, and or milliliter deflection and so that was um, indicated as the threshold. Very very nice, very fast, very convenient. Again, you can use it a handout, a handheld and print immediately from it wirelessly. You can use it via computer or you can use it as a handheld. It's going to do exactly what we did in the same time frame and then put it down in this cradle and download it to the database where again you can make PDF files um, merge it with EMR, whatever you want. Okay? So now let me move to a different mode. Of course I could change ears easily on here and, and I just change to the other ear and I can I could do the other ear. But I'm gonna move since that kind of give it, that gave you a, an overview of the uh, impedance or the middle ear analyzer section. And now I moved to the uh, OAE tab. This tab right here for OAE, this for impedance or middle ear analyzer, and then back to the main tab. So I'm on DPOAE now. This particular customer was used to doing DPOAE. We're delivering it next, next month to her. Uh, and she has never done TEOAE, so she just ordered it with the DPOAE. She didn't think she would use the other. And that would be typical of, of, of uh, most users here in the South. Notice the probe here and how it lights up red when I'm on the uh, right ear and how it lights up blue when I'm on the left ear. That was a good little feature. Um, okay, so I chose a DP gram that is six frequencies. Here in my, in my selection of protocols, I have programmed in one that I call a DP6. That's the typical DP gram that we've been doing here in Georgia for, for years and charging the diagnostic CPT code for. It's six frequencies from 1500 to 6000 hertz. I also put in a DP screen. A DP screen is four frequencies, 2000, 3000, 4000, and 5000, and it passes on three normal emissions out of the four. Okay? Um, and I'll demonstrate that to you as well. Uh, if these protocols were not what you wanted, then of course the protocols would be designed any way anybody would want them. There's no limit. Um, 
and then I put in a DX12. A DX12 is the diagnostic 12 frequency DP gram. I start this at 1000 and I go to 6500 in 500 hertz increments and I'll show you that as well. Okay? So, I'm going to seat the probe. I've already selected my DP6 as my protocol and now and I'm on the left ear and I am going to hit start. Watch how this is. I'm going to have to uh, just shut up during this and then I'll do some other kinds of demonstrations for you. Watch this. Now, I had this programmed that if I got four out of those six, it would pass and stop, okay? And I also had it programmed, and it doesn't have to, it can continue with the six uh, if you wanted to. I also had it programmed so that it would uh, run from high frequency to low frequency. Let me demonstrate a screening now. Suppose I change this to a screening. I, I, I described for you what the screening was. Now this is asking me, do I want to save the other one that I just did? I'm just going to say no. Now watch this. Look at that. Once I got three, three normal emissions, it stopped and it passed. Now suppose I wasn't so cooperative. Suppose I'm going to start this again and this time I'm going to be an uncooperative patient. Okay? This is telling me starting another one right now is going to dump the first one. Okay, fine. So now during this test, I'm talking. I'm doing an OAE screen, and I'm talking through the test. It's making it more difficult. But anyway, I'm still going to be able to get this test. And look at that. I talked through the whole test. I got three out of those four, so it passed. It also has a, uh, a smart way of running. If it had done these, these frequencies and had got the check mark means it's a normal emission. Normal because it is sufficiently resolved above the noise and normal because within, it's in with the normal range of amplitude. Okay? If it had gotten these three, it will then come back instead of cycling through again and again all four frequencies when three of them are fine it will just come back to that one that it didn't get and try to get that one, okay? And so, um, very, very fast and very noise immune. That's what I mean by performance. Performance in OAE testing means speed and noise immunity, okay? That's the whole thing. That's what makes it. Uh, everything else that you might have is actually icing on the cake. You'll notice up here that there's a spectrum. Here is... Here is um, F1 and F2, the two frequencies that are presented simultaneously in a DPOAE, and you notice that the levels are within the acceptable range, 65 and 55. This, if they were in these gray ranges, then um, they would be unacceptable. Calibrates in the ear, of course, and this line is where my emission should be, two times F1 minus F2, all right? And you can see it stands out well above the noise, and I can. I can click on any of these and I can see the spectrum that applies exactly to that one. Now let's look at this one that wasn't so good. Uh, notice where my emission should be and I don't see anything sticking up beyond the noise so an, an emission can't be determined at that frequency. Okay. Alright, so now that you've seen the screening and you've seen a demonstration of the performance, the speed and the noise immunity, nothing beats this. Uh, of every manufacturer's OAE that we run neck to neck with this. Nothing beats it in the performance angle. Okay? Um, let's try the 12 frequency, the diagnostic now. Okay? The, what we call the DX12. Now this is just telling me if I run that, uh, do I want to save what I just did? I'm just going to say no. Uh, Alright, now I'm going to uh, let it run the 12 frequencies. I programmed this one, and again, you can program them different ways. Uh, I programmed this one so that it would not run from high to low. It would run from low to high. 
This is one you would mainly do on adults, cooperative adults. Okay? Here we go. All right, I know I'm not going to get those, so I just hit stop, okay? So instead of trying to run again and again and again and get these, it was trying to concentrate on these and get these. By the way, this gray shaded, shaded area is the noise floor, and of course these are the plotted emissions. Every one of them that has a green check mark on it is one that was within the normal range in every way. Um, these, of course, are not. And as usual, I can click on any of these emissions and I can see uh, the spectrum um, that, that produced it and even the data. You know, if I wanted to know what the level of the emission was, what the noise was, what the signal to noise uh, difference was, um, the re look, look, even reliability 100%. So anyway, that's, that's the DP operation and the uh, impedance or middle ear analyzer operation of this system. Again, I could have done this entire thing um, on the handheld, printed immediately, or I could have, um, I could have uh, used it as I did as a PC, or I could have used it as a handheld and then I could put it in its cradle and download to the database. Once everything is in a database, like I'm going to save this, I'm going to say save and exit. I can do save without exiting but I hit save and exit just then. Back to the database. How are things saved? Well, here's a tab that says journal for this patient. So I can go into the journal and go into what I did today and I can see this DPOAE that I just did, the time stamped and everything. I can double click on it and there it is right back. Okay. If I wanted to make printouts, I'll show you what a PDF might look like. All I would do is print to PDF. I put a PDF writer on this computer already. You can download those from the internet free. And here's, here's a test I did yesterday um, where I, I did a tympanogram on both my left and right ear and I did reflexes on both ears as well. And there's even a place where I could write a test conclusion, which would be in this box right here. And let me show you a DPOAE test. I did the DP6 um, yesterday also. And here it is. Here's how it would look in a PDF report. Or the report, if, if I printed immediately from the handheld, no computer at all, it would still look exactly like this. Okay? Um, and... Um, so that would be both DP gram with the noise floor and the emissions indicated, and then all the data for each point that was plotted, okay? And whether that point was normal or not, these check marks uh, refer to these check marks that are up here. You can see my little high frequency sensor no loss here, just mild. Anyway, okay, so I hope that that has been helpful to you to understand these two functions and their performance on the Interacoustics Titan. There's one more function that I don't have on this one, so I can't show you today, maybe some other time, and that's the, uh, what they call the ABRIS, which, it, which is simply an acronym, an acronym for, um, for ABR infant screening, okay? Uh, and again, the main feature of that product is, is speed and, uh, and reliability and noise immunity. Of all the AABR infant screeners that I have used over the years, and that's every make and model in existence, I think, uh, this is, has the best performance, the best speed, the best noise, ability, noise immunity, and the, be the best ability to um, 
uh, to pass babies that should without passing ones that, that uh, don't have a response. Okay, well, I hope that that has been helpful, and uh, maybe we'll see you back on one of these YouTube videos for another demonstration at another day.